Hello friends, welcome to Affairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current affairs of 7th of August 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you can download our application from the description box link and after downloading you can log in with your email ID and you can click on this crack current affairs section to subscribe our current affairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. Even uh, today we are providing very important information about the discount so watch this video till last. And guys remember we are covering 90 to 95 percent of those current affairs which can come in your exam. This is the genuinity, this is the hard work of affairs cloud team. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will see three things. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, we are providing three things. Detailed current fair, question and answer format, and the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Next is the monthly current fair and this is the most important because we are providing four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format, best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket PDF. It means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise the current fair very easily in quick format. And guys remember to enhance your performance we are also providing 20 most important topic list in the form of PDF. It means we are covering 20 most important topics and you can cover one topic related all the news just from single PDF. So it means if you want to revise a particular topic then you can use this topic wise current fair. And guys if you are a banking student we are providing three things one is the detail and the question and answer format of current fair is only related to banking and economy and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on monthly basis that is also related to banking and economy. And guys remember if you want to cover the past current fair of 2021 then you can cover just from single PDF that is known as exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. We are also providing expected question and answer from budget and economic survey so that you can know that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. And guys remember if you are preparing for your respective state exam then we are providing state current fair and especially we are covering every state and union territory. So this is a very important thing because we are providing all these things under one subscription. We are not charging different, uh, different uh, categories. So remember we are providing all these things under one subscription. You have to just download our application, log in with your email ID and click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Especially who are beginner, I am recommending you to subscribe the current fairs for two year. But guys, very important information for you that we are celebrating uh, 75 year of independence and we are providing you a uh, happy independence day freedom sale that is 70% off. This is first time that we are providing maximum to maximum discount never happened before. So guys, this is the only time that you can subscribe between 7th August to 16th of August to take benefit to maximum to maximum discount and the current affair price is reduced so much guys so much and on that minimal price we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10 and if you have any query you can reach us on this email id you can also call us on this number so let's start today's current fair that is 7th of august 2021 but you have to uh, like this video share this video and please subscribe our channel if you're new on this platform and guys please join our telegram group from the description box link so let's start today's session with the most important question section and here is the first question who is appointed as the director of the geological survey of india it is appointed as the director journal of the geological survey of india and guys remember this is the most important question because because this woman was appointed after 100 year history of the geological survey of india it means in the 100 in the last 100 years of the geological survey of india this is the first woman who was appointed and this is driti benerji so answer of this question is c and you can see here the image of driti benerji and she was appointed director of the geological survey of india and she is the first woman director in the 100 year this is most important thing and she will be the first woman director of the geological survey of india in 100 year this is very important and appointed committee of the cabinet approved the proposal for the appointment of driti benerji as the director of geological survey of india and driti benerji will succeed the current director general of geological survey of india who is dr kailash chander you have to remember who is currently or who is former then answer is dr kailash chander 
एंड गाइस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर इन 2016 दिस धृति बनर्जी ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया सेंटेनरी सेलिब्रेशन और यू कैन से हंड्रेड ईयर ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन बिकॉज दिस जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया वॉज सेलिब्रेटेड इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड ईयर इट मीन्स इट वॉज फॉर्मड इन नाइनटीन एंड दिस धृति बनर्जी को ऑथर दी डॉक्यूमेंट टाइटल द ग्लोरियस हंड्रेड वुमेन साइंटिफिक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया विच स्पेशली हाईलाइट्स द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन मेड बाई दी वुमेन साइंटिस्ट ऑन द स्टडीज रिलेटेड टू डिफरेंट एनिमल ग्रुप्स एंड गाइज यू कैन ऑल्सो रिमेंबर जस्ट ए स्टेटिक क्वेश्चन यू कैन जस्ट रीड दिस लाइन दैट मीरा मनसुखानी वॉज द फर्स्ट वुमेन साइंटिस्ट ऑफ द जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया जस्ट रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट नेम मीरा वॉज द फर्स्ट वुमेन साइंटिस्ट ऑफ द जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया and thomas nelson was the first director general of the geological survey of india when it was established in 1916 and guys remember geological survey of india headquarters is in calcutta in calcutta and it was established in 1916 and it comes under the ministry of environment forest and the climate change and guys you can also remember current director is dr kailash chandra and newly appointed is driti benerji and guys one most important organization which is also known as the mother of this organization that is geological survey of india and this organization is asiatic remember very important history question asiatic society of bengal this is very important question in history so many times asked that asiatic society of bengal was formed by which person it was uh, formed by sir william johns so remember sir william johns formed this organization in 1784 so asiatic society of bengal was the mother institution of so many institutions like geological survey of india uh, geological survey of india indian museum organization so these organizations was created according to the asiatic society of bengal that's why this organization is important and it is formed by sir william johns in 1784 so guys remember these things because these are very very important but you can also remember the other appointments here like you can see sudanshu mittal very important appointment because he became the president of very important federation of india that is known as kho kho federation of india kho kho federation of india next uh, shambhu nath shrivastava he was recently appointed as chairman of indian federation of united nation association indian federation of united nation association and who become the chairman shambhu nath shrivastava next again very important appointment for the northeastern development that is pvsln murthy you can remember the name very easily because it is different and uh, recently chairman and managing director he was appointed as chairman and managing director of North Eastern North Eastern Development Finance Corporation so it is for the development of the North Eastern so guys remember these appointments now we are moving to the next question Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratan award has been renamed as again the most important question and very well renowned question i think all the students know this major dhyan chand khel ratan award so answer of this question is a so you can see here rajiv gandhi khel ratan award renamed as the major dhyan chand very famous hockey player and uh, uh, this award was named with this hockey player dhyan chand khel ratan award and the highest sporting honor of india that is rajiv gandhi khel ratan award has been renamed as major dhyan chand khel ratan award in honor to uh the very famous hockey player dhyan chand and the khel ratan award was firstly started in the year of 1991 92 and guys remember it was started with the name of the prime minister the former prime minister rajiv gandhi who was died in 1991 that's why uh, this award was named after the uh, rajiv gandhi and the inaugural award it means the first award of 1991 92 was given to very famous and uh, you can say very legend player of chess that is vishwanathan anand so you can remember and prime minister narendra modi specially stated that the renaming was based on the request from the citizens across india to name the khel ratan award after the dhyan chand and this award consists of 20 lakh rupees that is a whooping amount which is given under this award and a medal and also a certificate and award is annually represented by ministry of youth affairs and sports so you can remember these and guys remember about major dhyan chand who was also known as the the wizard was an indian hockey player who represented the indian hockey from 1926 to 1949 especially almost you can say he led the team for 20 years and uh, he has scored more than 400 goals this is again important and he has won three consecutive gold medals three consecutive gold medal one in 1928 1932 and 1936 olympic games so this is again very important and government of india has honored him with the padam bhushan padam bushan in 1956 and uh, since 2012 guys remember since 2012 uh, 
the birth anniversary of dhyan chand also celebrated as national sports day this is again very important and we are celebrating national sports day on the 29th of august so it means it is the birth anniversary of dhyan chand so guys remember these things these are very very important and first award given to vishwanathan anand and guys one most important information that youngest recipient of this uh, rajiv gandhi khel ratan award or you can say now major dhyan chand khel ratan award youngest recipient is abhinav bindra in 2001 he received this uh, award and he was just 18 years old at that time and guys remember uh, recently in 2020 uh this award represented to five players this is again very important this award given to five players this is the first time that this award given to five players and these five players are one from cricket very famous rohit sharma uh he belongs to cricket next is uh, mariappa mariappa thangavelu and he belongs to para olympic high jump you can also remember and uh, next is manika batra very important player and uh, belongs to table tennis or you can say tt uh, vinesh fogat very famous wrestler guys remember vinesh fogat the fogat family is very famous in the wrestling rani rampal again very famous player from hockey hockey women team so guys these five players were awarded with the rajiv gandhi khel ratan award for 2020 so this is the current information you can remember now we are moving to next question who won the ninth edition of the fide that is the international chess federation world cup 2021 this is the highest cup in the chess history and uh, guys remember this is the world cup of the chess and the player who won this award belongs to poland and name of this player is jan kristof duda so you can remember the pronunciation can be difficult but you have to remember jan duda and he belongs to which country he belongs to poland and he defeated which player he defeated the russian player sergey uh, krachkin so remember he belongs to russia so guys this information is very very important and guys you can see here the picture of jan kristof duda and he belongs to poland and he won this world cup that is fides world cup of 2021 and uh, he belongs to poland and he defeated sergey krachkin we already covered and this is hosted by which country this world cup is hosted by russia and exact city is sochi and guys remember uh, 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 the top two fine uh, uh, finalist you can say one is the sergey krachkin and second is the jan duda uh aside from the world champion magnus carlson you have to remember this player name because he is world number 1 player in the chess category uh he was in the third under this world cup of 2021 these three players like one is sergey krachkin second is jan duda and third is magnus carlson already qualified the 2022 world cup tournament because uh, all the players all these three players stood uh, the first three uh ranking so that's why the first three ranking already qualified for the 2022 world cup so you can also remember an indian side was represented by vidit sandosh you can also remember this because the indian challenge at the fide world cup 2021 ended as the vidit santosh gujarati uh, who lost in the quarter finals uh, by jan duda jan duda uh, won the quarter finals against vidit santosh so vidit santosh represented india under this world cup so guys you can remember this vital information which i told you but this is the first time that women world cup women fide world cup was also hosted by sochi russia and uh, the first winner of this women fide world cup is alexandria kostenyuk you have to just remember the initials alexandria and she belongs to russia and she is the first winner of the women's world cup fide championship so guys remember this is again very very important question so this organization is very important international chess federation its headquarters is in lusan headquarters is in lusan switzerland now we are moving to next section it is a very important question section guys you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and please join our telegram group from the description box link and guys very important information that we are providing you independence sale or you can say freedom sale and we are providing you maximum to maximum discount that is 70% discount it was uh, uh, it was never happened before and uh, it will never happen uh, again so guys remember you can take benefit of this uh, discount and uh, it is provided between 7 to 16th of august and you can also use for extra discount ash10 code so guys now we are moving to the fourth question which state launched india's first doorstep healthcare scheme and guys remember the chief minister of this state is mk stalin and now answer is very simple answer is tamil nadu so answer is b you can see here very important uh, scheme that uh, it is the first in india 
that Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin launched this scheme to deliver medical services at people's doorstep. And guys, remember the name of this scheme in the Tamil Nadu named as Makkalai Thedi Muruthuvam. Guys, my pronunciation can be wrong because it is in South Indian language. So guys, remember Makkalai Thedi Muruthuvam. And in English, it means healthcare services at people's doorstep healthcare. And it is to deliver medical services at the people doorstep. And the program will focus on the community-based interventions to improve compliance and the disease control in Tamil Nadu. And the main objective is just to eliminate the need to, for patients to visit hospitals for treating non-communicable diseases. So, uh, in the first phase of the scheme, it will cover almost 1172 health sub-centers, health sub-centers, and 189 primary health centers, 50 community health centers, in 50 universal coverage block across Tamil Nadu and it will be extended to the entire state by the end of 2021. So guys remember about Tamil Nadu here, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister is MK Stalin, Chief uh, Governor is Banwari Lal Prohit, Banwari Lal Prohit and very important national parks are there, one is Goindi National Park, you can remember, uh, Anna Malai Tiger Reserve is there, Mudu Malai Tiger Reserve is also there, Anna Malai is also known as Indira Gandhi uh, Tiger Reserve, Gulf of Mannar National Park is also there. Gulf of Mannar National Park. Moving to next question. Eurosport India signed whom as the India's brand ambassador for MotoGP. First of all, the students who don't know about MotoGP, in simple word you can say, it is the motorcycle race or it is motorcycle Grand Prix. So the Grand Prix motorcycle racing is popularly known as the MotoGP. And Eurosport India, remember, it is an Indian sports channel of Discovery Asia Pacific. And this channel appointed actor John Ibrahim, actor John Ibrahim as India's ambassador for its flagship motorsport property, which is known as MotoGP. As the ambassador, John Ibrahim will promote the MotoGP to audience across India through the MotoGP race lagate hain. Let's do race campaign. So, uh, John Ibrahim will promote Let's Do Race campaign. So, you have to just remember the name is John Ibrahim. And this is very simple question. You can just remember from the slide. And guys, other uh, brand ambassadors are again very important like Washington Sundar and Devdat Padikal. Uh, he was recently, both are recently appointed as the brand ambassador of Puma India. And Shefali Burma, very important cricketer of women's cricket team, very important. And uh, she was recently appointed as a brand ambassador of PepsiCo. Guys, very important company, PepsiCo. Moving to next question. For the first time in India, water villas. So this is very interesting question. Water villas will be set up in which state or union territory? So remember the keyword here that we have to build the water villas in India and it will be established in which state or UT. By default, you can eliminate the options like we can only make these water villas along our coastal areas that is from Gujarat to West Bengal. So all the options basically belongs to coastal areas. So the answer can be difficult, but now the answer is Lakshadweep. So guys, remember, answer is D. And these water villas are very famous in Maldives. So that's why we have to construct these uh, water villas like in the Maldives. So you can see here, this is water villa. These are very luxurious water villas and uh, these are situated on the water. So that's why these are known as water villas. And it is a first time that Lakshadweep will soon have water villas and total amount will be invested like 800 crore rupees will be invested similar to those in the Maldives. I already referred Maldives. And similar to the water villas in the Maldives, these will be the solar powered. It means uh, green energy will be supplied and it will be also eco-friendly to provide world class facilities at Lakshadweep. And guys, remember total investment is 800 crore rupees and the decision behind this development is to develop Lakshadweep like Maldives and in order to promote tourism and to the benefit of local residents of the Lakshadweep. So guys, remember the Union Territory is Lakshadweep. And uh, Union Territory of Lakshadweep is the smallest Union Territory. Uh, total area is just 32 square kilometer. That is the smallest Union Territory. Capital is Kavarati. You can also remember the capital if you don't know. Governor is Praful Patel. Praful Patel. Full name is, I think, Praful Khoda Patel. Praful Khoda Patel. You can remember, otherwise you can remember just Praful Patel. And uh, guys, there is very famous island that is Piti Island. This is also one of the wildlife sanctuary of Lakshadweep and total islands are 36 in Lakshadweep. And the southernmost island is Minikoi. You can also remember this. Moving to next question. 
which country recently joined the coalition on disaster resilient infrastructure so guys the organization is very important here the name of the organization is coalition on disaster resilient infrastructure what is the purpose of this organization when this organization was established i will tell you everything but recently two countries one is the bangladesh second is canada both joined this organization and answer of this question is both b and c so you can see here india welcomes bangladesh as well as canada to accepting the invitation to join this coalition on the uh, for the disaster resilient infrastructure so guys remember it is a global partnership of the national governments of the countries united nation agencies programs and various international banks to promote the resilience of new and existing infrastructure system to climate and disaster risk in support of the sustainable development it is for the sustainable development it is to promote the climate resilient infrastructure as well as the disaster risk uh, uh, you can say to uh, overcome the disaster risk of uh, this infrastructure we have to generate this new and existing infrastructure so that's why this organization was formed and guys remember uh, cdri has 25 countries as seven international organization as its member seven international organizations are like united nation development program you can say i am giving you example world bank is there you can say asian development bank is there european union is also there remember european union recently joined in march 2021 this question can come in march 2021 european union joined this organization which is known as coalition on disaster resilient infrastructure now uh, this organization was basically formed uh, by you can say narendra modi and uh, this is the idea of narendra modi at the united nation climate action summit united nation climate action summit which was happened in 2019 in september and uh, then united nation accepted this uh, idea and uh, they formed this organization because it is promoted by india that's why this organization headquarter is in new delhi is in new delhi and its director general is sandeep pondrick but you have to just remember sandeep the name is sandeep so guys remember this organization this organization is very important european union recently joined this organization why this organization is important because it is promoted by india and its headquarter is also in india like international solar alliance this is also promoted by india and the french prime minister and uh, international solar alliance headquarter is also in gurugram so this is also situated in india and this organization coalition on the disaster resilient infrastructure is also in india that's why this is important now we are moving to next question which university has recognized as the district green campaign for the academic year 2020 21 it means i am talking about financial year 21 and uh, the name of the award or name of the recognition is district green campaign and this award or this recognition is given to those universities who are basically focusing on the uh, green campaign or you can say swachh bharat campaign for the best sanitization facility in the campus uh, you can say uh, best clean campus so this award is known as district green campaign or the champion so guys this champion award is given to chitkara university and guys this chitkara university is situated in punjab its headquarter is in punjab otherwise it is situated in so many states so answer of this question is b so you can see here uh, this award is given by mahatma gandhi national council of rural education and uh, this organization recognized this district green champion for the academic year of 2020 21 and guys remember the university has established swachhata action plan committee and adopted the best practices in sanitation you can say because we are talking about swachh bharat waste management water management or you can say energy management and greenery management so uh, this uh, you can say university promoted the swachh bharat mission uh, in the campus so that's why this university recognized as the district green champion and the award recognizes the colleges that actively participated in maintaining the green and sanitized campus alongside with the swachh bharat mission so guys you can just remember the name of the university is chitkara university move to next question and again it is very important question guys india's former two time olympian named is shankar subramanyam narayan passed away he was player of which game so in any obituary you have to remember the three things one is the name of the player one of the uh, you can say very important player and uh, profession it means the game you have to remember and third is the state from which he belongs to so name is shankar subramanyam narayan state is kerala you have to remember he belongs to kerala and the game is football so answer of this question is a and uh, he was very famous uh, you can say goalkeeper of uh, football team 
you can see here the uh, picture olympian footballer ss narayan or you can say uh, the name is very important you have to remember the full name that is shankar subramanyam narayan and he passed away at the age of 86 and he was born in 1934 you don't have to remember the year you have to just remember the state kerala and narayan was also part in the indian team that finished second in the asian cup in 1964 and asian games in 1958 and guys, remember one thing because we are talking about a uh, two-time winner of the Olympics and uh, uh, he represented India in the Melbourne 1956 Summer Olympics in the Melbourne and 1960 Rome Summer Olympics and uh, uh, the football team won the medal so that's why he was two-time Olympian. So guys, remember one important thing, he also represented Bombay in 1956 Santosh Trophy. Santosh Trophy is related to football. So again, you can remember. So organization is very important, AIFF, that is known as All India Football Federation. President is Praful Patel, you can remember, headquarters is in New Delhi. So guys, just remember the name of the player, state is Kerala and game is football. Moving to next question. Which state or union territory launched a campaign named Water Ma Month or Panima, Panima is in Hindi and in English it is known as Water Month, to accelerate the implementation of Jaljivan Mission. First of all, if you know about Jaljivan Mission, then we can answer this question. Like Jaljivan Mission was started by Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji or Ministry of Jal Shakti in 2019. It was started by Ministry of Water Resources or you can say Jal Shakti in Hindi. And it was uh, launched on the occasion of our uh, independence like 15th of August 2019. And according to Jaljivan Mission, uh, 55 liters, remember 55 liter of water per person per person per day to every household through functional household tap connection by the year of 2024, 2024. So this is the target of Jaljivan Mission and recently the state government of uh, you can say the union territory government of the uh, Ladakh launched this water month. So answer of this question is B. So you can see here, you can also see here the campaign Jaljivan Mission water month and it is celebrated on the 1st of August to 30th of August 2021. It is one month long campaign. And guys, remember this is uh, to inform and engage village communities on the importance of the clean water in the Union Territory of the Ladakh. This is again very, very important. And the campaign includes two phases to run at the block and the panchayat level. This is again very important because in the first phase, like uh, from 1st of August to 14th of August, like uh, for the 15 days, water samples will be collected from all identified sources and service delivery points for testing. And in the second phase, you can say uh, from 16th of August to 30th of August, water quality test reports and analysis with the villagers in an open form will be discussed. So this is important. And award will be given like 5 lakh rupees per village has been announced to the 5 villages which will be uh, named as Har Gar Jal villages of each district. It means in each district 5 villages will be selected under the name of Har Gar Jal villages and every village will get 5 lakh rupees and this will be provided to 5 villages in each district. And one block will also be uh, selected for uh, from the each district of the uh, Ladakh and 25 lakh rupees to each block will be provided. So huge amount will be provided. Uh, you can say to use this amount to uh, uh, prepare for the testing or you can say to uh, uh, complete this Jal Jivan mission in stipulated time period. So guys, you can also remember about Ministry of Jal Shakti or Ministry of Water Resources and Union Ministry is Gajendra Singh Shekhawat ji, constituency is Jodhpur, constituency is Jodhpur, Rajasthan. So all the things are covered. Yes, you can also remember about Ladakh. Ladakh Lieutenant or the Lieutenant Governor is Radha Krishan Mathur. And remember, very important national park is there, Hemis National Park. Moving to next question. Who authored a new book named as the biography of a failed venture? Guys, again, very important because this person authored this book uh, by the name, you can guess the biography of the failed venture. It means it is just a, uh, you can say strategy and uh, uh, you can say uh, how we can invest in the venture so that uh, the venture uh, can do good or venture can make money. So uh, the mistakes which is done by this person, it cannot be done by other person. So that's why this book is written and answer of this question is very famous chartered accountant that is Prashant Desai. So you can see here the cover page, the biography of a failed venture and the tagline is decoding success secrets from the black box of a dead startup. And it is also referred by Virendra Sevag. So again, very important because uh, uh, this person like Prashant Desai started a sports uh, brand, but it was failed. So that's why he wrote a book. So you can see here it features the accounts on why the brand D uh, 
iPhone uh, F5 failed and how entrepreneurs can avoid these mistakes and become successful. And guys, remember Prashant Desai, a senior director at Everstone Capital, which is currently serving as the strategy and investor relations at Burger King India. And he started the startup Can D iPhone F by Sports Private Limited, a made in India technology based sports brand in 2017, but it was failed. So that's why um, he uh, he is telling the entrepreneurs that uh, they can avoid the mistakes which uh, he had done already and become successful entrepreneur. And he has also worked with the, so many companies and the financial technology and very renowned personality. So you have to just remember the name Prashant Desai. But other authors are very, very famous here. One is the Daval Kulkarni. He wrote very famous book about the Nathuram Godse. Who is Nathuram Godse? Nathuram Godse uh, was that person who uh, killed Gandhi. And uh, uh, the caption of the book is the true story of Gandhi's assassin. Gandhi's assassin or you can say why he killed Gandhi. Next is uh, Jairam Ramesh, very famous politician and he wrote a book, The Light of Asia. The Light of Asia. This book is very important. Next is Bimal Jalan, again very famous bureaucrat and uh, he wrote a book, The India Story. The India Story. So you can remember these books because these are very, very important. Moving to next question. National Fisheries Development Board has signed MOU with which bank to extend financial assistance to the fishery sector. So it is just to revive the fishery sector in all the states. So that's why this National Fisheries Development Board signed a MOU with one bank so that this bank can provide financial assistance to the fishery sector. And this bank is guys Punjab National Bank. So answer of this question is D. So you can see here this National Fishery Development Board has signed a MOU with the PNB to extend the financial assistance to the fishery sector through the bank's branches or you can say through the Punjab National Bank branches. So this is very important and uh, the uh, journal office of Hyderabad of the Punjab National Bank will be the nodal office. Why Hyderabad? Because this National Fisheries Development Board headquarters is also situated in Hyderabad. That's why Punjab National Bank chose this Hyderabad journal office as the nodal office. And under this memorandum of understanding, the fishery sector will tie up with the individuals as well as private entrepreneurs or the agencies or the organizations of the fisheries under Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana for availing bank loan from the Punjab National Bank. It means the loan will be provided by Punjab National Bank, but it will be referred by, it means the private sector players, individuals will be referred by this organization, which is National Fishery Development Board. And guys, remember this scheme which was started by Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi ji, known as Pradhan Mantri or the Prime Minister Matsya Sampada Yojana. And uh, this was started in September 2020 for the sustainable development of Indian fishery sector with an estimated investment of 20,000 crore rupees. Exact amount, I think 20,050 crore rupees. But you can just remember 20,000 crore. And it will be implemented in all the states and the union territories for five years, like for the uh, from 2020-21 to 2024-25. So it is for the five years. And guys, remember about Punjab National Bank. Punjab National Bank was established in 1895. Uh, its tagline is the name you can bank upon. The name the uh, name you can bank upon. And guys, you can also remember recently uh, Oriental Bank of Commerce and United Bank of India also merged under the Punjab National Bank. You can also remember this. Already we covered National Fishery Development Board. You have to just remember the headquarter that is situated in Hyderabad. Moving to next question. So cabinet passed the bill restoring power states to make their own OBC list. Earlier this was the power of the state government. But you have to remember the background here by the 102nd amendment. By the 102nd amendment of you can say 2018. Uh, center government. Center government passed a bill. Uh, according to this bill. Uh, they removed the power vested with the state and the union territory to create their to create their own OBC list. So this power was taken by the center government under 102nd amendment of 2018. So guys, uh, now they are again giving this power uh, uh, by uh, amending the constitution, you can say. And uh, the bill will be passed for the parliament approval in the upcoming parliament session. And the amendment will be made over the article 242A and two uh, sorry 366 342a and 366c of the constitution you can remember these article as well you can uh, just remember these article like you can say uh, the first is 342a 342a stand it powers the president to notify the particular caste of scbc like socially economically backward class 
and also enables the parliament to change the list. And 366 is again very important because it gives the definition of SCBC, that is uh, socially economically backward class. So these articles uh, will be amended and uh, by amending these articles against the power will be re restored to the states. It means the state can now make their own OBC list. And guys remember recently uh, by referring article this 342A Supreme Court recently uh, uh, put ban on the Maharashtra government from granting reservation to the Marathas and stated the center's only power to drop the single center OBC list. So that's why again the power is now restored to the states and the, now the state government can make their own list. So guys, you have to remember it was earlier taken by the center government by this amendment. Now they are giving again. Moving to next question. So all the most important and very important questions are now ended. We are moving to important question. You have to like this video, share this video and subscribe this channel. And guys, please join our telegram group from the description box link. And guys, one important thing that we are providing maximum to maximum discount, that 70% discount we are providing. So current fair will be provided at very minimal price. If you see, you will definitely surprise guys because this offer will expire after 16th of August. So you have just one week. So it is an Independence Day sale and uh, it was never happened before and it will never happen before. So guys, remember, this is the first time and the last time we are providing this so much discount. And after that discount, we are providing additional discount if you use this code ASH10. Definitely you will get 10% extra discount. So now this is the question. Board of Governors of which organization has approved its largest US 650 billion allocation that is US 650 billion dollar. So guys this is important because it is the largest allocation in the history of this organization. So in order to boost the global liquidity and curb the COVID-19 impact, the Board of Governors of International Monetary Fund, remember answer is D, has approved a general allocation of the special drawing rights equivalent to the $650 billion with effect from the 23rd of August 2021. And it is the largest SDR allocation by International Monetary Fund. And under this special drawing rights, the wealthier member countries like United States of America, China, or you can say France can voluntarily lend the part of their SDRs to the low income countries through IMF Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust, which is currently interest free. It means this SDR will be allocated to the, uh, the allocated to the wealthier nations can be uh, lended to the, uh, you can say the weaker economies or the low income countries. So this is IMF guys, you have to remember about International Monetary Fund, it was established in 1944 alongside with World Bank. So World Bank and IMF both are known as Bretton Woods Twins because both are formed in 1944 under one conference which is known as Bretton Woods uh, Twins. These are also known as Bretton Woods Twins. And uh, its uh, managing director is Christina Georgieva, member countries are 190, recently added as Andorra and uh, headquarters in Washington DC. But you can also remember from the Indian side. Uh, it is represented by Geeta Gopinath, the men, uh, you can say economic counselor and research department director is Geeta Gopinath, very important personality. Moving to next question and it is again from picture, it is just information that third bi-monthly monetary policy report of financial year 22 is represented by monetary policy committee. All you know that monetary policy committee has six members and it is headed by RBA governor which is Shakti Kandas and it is represented 4th of August. So guys. Uh, nothing changed, the policy rates were kept unchanged, like repo rate is 4% as same as earlier, reverse repo is uh, 0.65 uh, less than the repo rate, always it is less than repo rate, it is 3.35, MSF is 4.25 and bank rate is also 4.25 and cash reserve ratio again 4%, SDR or you can say SLR statutory liquidity ratio is also 18%. So uh, one important thing here is, Monetary Policy Committee has retained India's real gross domestic product growth real gross domestic product growth predicted for the financial year 22 is 9.5 percent especially for the banking students i am covering this news you have to remember this uh, now we are moving to the next it is from uh, our one liner important point you have to just remember these points these are uh, not so much important but you can remember and uh, examiner can ask like uh, one or two questions from there First is government of Kerala launched COVID-19 dead information portal. You have to just remember it is COVID-19 death information portal. We have to change the color to red so that you can see COVID-19 death information portal. It is state government of Kerala. So this is launched to ensure transparency and maintain a proper record of the number of deaths due to COVID-19. 
and the government institution and the general public have access to this portal and the portal provides details such as you can say name, age, uh, you can say sex or gender and the district of the person who died due to COVID-19. And guys, at present, the portal has a data of COVID-19 deaths up to 22nd of July, but it will be updated soon. So guys, next is uh, Bharat Dynamic Limited signed MOU with the uh, Uttar Pradesh to invest in the UP Defence Corridor. So guys, it is very important. It is just to improve the manufacturing units in the Uttar Pradesh Defence Industrial Corridor. And one organization is Bharat Dynamics Limited and second is Uttar Pradesh Expressway Industrial Development Authority, one and very important organization for the Uttar Pradesh. And uh, they will invest almost 400 crore, like uh, Bharat Dynamics Limited will invest 400 crore rupees to revive this Uttar Pradesh Defence Corridor. So you have to just remember and remember Bharat Dynamics Limited headquarters is in Hyderabad. Next, Ram Subhag Singh appointed as the Himachal Pradesh Chief Secretary. This news is only for the Himachal Pradesh student. You have to just remember that recently a new Chief Secretary was appointed. Earlier, this position was uh, uh, held by Anil, Anil Kumar Kanchi. You can remember and I think every Himachal Pradesh student know this, Anil Kumar Kanchi. And he was the uh, uh, Chief Secretary of Himachal Pradesh earlier. Now he become the State Election Commissioner. Now he become the state election commissioner. So this position was vacant. Now this position was taken care by Ram Subhag Singh. So remember this. Next, Hiroshima Day was observed on the 6th of August. Again, this is very important. I think all the students know that Hiroshima Day is annually observed across the globe on 6th of August to remember the victims of the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan during the World War II, which was happened from 1939 to 1945. This was the time period of World War II. And the day also aims to create awareness about the adverse effects of the nuclear power and the nuclear weapons and to promote world peace. And 6th of August 2021 marks the observance of the 76th anniversary of the Hiroshima attack. And guys, remember this was happened on the 6th of August 1945. The United States of America dropped the first nuclear bomb and uh, which is also known as uh, uh, Little Boy, Little Boy, Hiroshima. Uh, um, nuclear attack is also known as Little Boy on the city of Hiroshima, which killed more than 1,40,000 1,40,000 people, which is around 39% of its population. And later, after three days, like on 9th of August, a second nuclear bomb was, uh, you can say, placed on the Nagasaki and killed almost 40,000 people. So this, this was disaster. So guys, remember Hiroshima Day 6th August, Nagasaki Day 9th of August. Next, SBI, Axis Bank, ICIC and other three banks buy some stake in IBBIC. Again, guys, this is very, very important because we covered this question earlier that this organization, which is known as Indian Banks Blockchain Infrastructure Company and uh, even SBI, Axis Bank, you can say, ICIC Bank, Indian Bank, I am writing the names, Indian Bank, IDBI Bank was also there and one is the Yes Bank. So these six banks almost buy 5.55% stake each. So remember 55.55% stake each. So you have to just remember the exact number of the stake. Next, Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav represents India at G20 Digital Ministers meeting. Very simple question because uh, it is a digital ministers meeting. That's why it is uh, represented by our Union Minister of Electronics and uh, you can say Union Minister of Information and Technology and newly appointed is Ashwini Vaishnav. So guys, he represented India in the Digital Ministers meeting and G20 Presidentship of 2021 lies with Italy. So it was hosted by Italy. And guys, remember about G20, it was established in 1999. Total member countries are 19 and one organization is also member that is European Union. So all combi combination becomes 20. So that's why it is known as G20. So remember this. Now we are moving to next section. It is the question of the day. 6th of August 2021 question was very, very simple and most important question. And guys, the very important thing that this question is covered under the NCRT like macroeconomics NCRT. So this is very important. What is the currency deposit ratio? So guys, in simple word, you can uh, remember this. What is currency deposit ratio? Uh, you can say it is the ratio of money held by the public, held by the public in currency like uh, in hand you can say to that they hold in the banks so it means uh, you can say above is liquidity in hand or second is liquidity in banks so this is the main thing so it reflects people reference or the preference for the liquidity it means if currency deposit ratio is maximum or highest then it means the people have 
uh, more liquidity. It means people can uh, uh, buy more things in the market because they have uh, cash in hand. So it means it is high. It means the liquidity is high. For example, you can say if CDR is increasing uh, uh, during the festival season as the people convert deposits to the cash balance for meeting extra expenditure during such period. So that's why CDR is high. So it means if CDR is high, it means the uh, people's cash in hand is high. So it is the ratio of money held by the public in currency to that of money held in bank deposit. It can be the answer. So A can be the answer. Ratio of money held by the public in bank deposit to the money held in. So it is uh, uh, not uh, right because it is uh, like uh, you can say uh, vice versa. And uh, ratio of the money held in the demand drafts. No, it is again not none of the worst. So answer of this question is A. So single option is there. A is the answer. Now we are moving to the question of the day. Very simple question. Who is eligible to be a promoter of the small finance bank? So very simple question and very important question. We are talking about small finance bank and you have to tell me who can become the promoter of small finance bank. So guys, you have to answer me only in the comment box. I'm waiting your answer. And please, uh, the students who are watching the video, please press the like button. We want likes. You have to motivate us. And please subscribe this channel and please share this video as maximum as possible. And guys, please press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time and please join Telegram for this. And uh, it is Affairs Cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the journal awareness section. And guys, the most important thing that we are providing you maximum sale that is 70% discount on the independent sale. And the time period is 7th August to 16th of August. So guys, hurry. Please grab this uh, offer. It is very, very important because uh, this was never happened before and we are first time providing this uh, huge discount and on that huge discount we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10 and guys please smile like this like this smiley and uh, don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy thank you guys take care and bye bye